Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss process control charts, control charts, sure charts. They have a bunch of different names, but the use is the same. These are charts that are really well designed for monitoring process stability, identifying outliers, uh, distinguishing sort of a typical output versus some of the special causes. It's really great for trend detection, baseline assessment. So these are really powerful charts that are really easy to look at, relatively easy to set up. It would be a great tool in your arsenal for Python data visualizations. And so let's get started. So here's our notebook. We have pandas and numpy, which we'll be using to read in the data and do some of the processing. And then matplotlib, for which we will use for data visualization. The data can be found here. In the next video, when I talk about the multivariate outlier tests, I'll explain more about this data set. But in any case, we have the data stored here. This is mineral data looking at the lipsite crystal. And we are going to look at this barium oxide measurement. So the first five rows of the data can be seen here. But I will show you the data we're going to be focusing on. This will be df.barium oxide. And we have a series of measurements. So this is very ideal for a control chart. And so let's set our sample data to say equal to df.barium oxide. And so in this case, we can switch this variable and generate the same control chart. One of the key aspects of this is to compute the mean and standard deviation. And so for this, we'll just say mean equals mp.mean. And let's just say df barium oxide. There are other ways to compute the mean, but this is just one way. And we'll say standard deviation equals mp.std, and it will also be pretty much the same. And so now these are single variables that are produced by computing the mean value for the barium oxide measurements and the standard deviation of those measurements. When building control charts, the idea is to identify a bound, an upper limit and a lower limit or upper control limit and lower control limit for which you're evaluating your measurements against. And this is usually based on the mean value plus or minus some number of standard deviations. And so let's compute this. We'll say the upper control limit equals uh, the mean, we'll say plus two times standard deviation. And then the lower control limit but the same thing, LCL instead, minus two standard deviations. And so you can see that now we have a mean value, a standard deviation, and then some bound that we will use to see if our data is out of control or within this range. And so now let's begin plotting the data. So first, let's actually put our data on a figure. So we'll use matplotlib.plot and let's plot data. So when we do this, we get this plot. And this is a typical line plot. We can make it look a little bit better by changing the markers. So the next, the, uh, the so the next input is the marker, and this is a little bit easier to see where our measurements are. And then because we have so much information down here on the x-axis, let's set plt.x ticks and change the rotation to be let's say 90 degrees. It makes it easier to see these Phillipsite measurements. So now you can see as we are measuring the barium oxide levels, we have some range here and then some uh, changes as a function of the measurement. So if we assume this is some time course study. Um, this could be a suitable reason why we might want some sort of control chart. So next, let's put our, our lines on there, our upper control limit and our lower control limit. So to do that, we will do plt.axline and we will set the value equal to upper control limit. Let's set the color equal to red. And then let's set line style, line style equal to dashed. So we do this, we get a limit like this, where we can now see that we have our upper control limit. We'll do the same thing for our lower control limit. And we set this to LCL and everything is the same. So now we have our lower control limit as negative two. Let's add a third line that will be the mean value. So instead of LCL, let's just place mean and let's make the line color gray. And so now you can see our mean value, our upper control limit and our lower control limit. We can add labels here. So if we say label equals mean if we then choose to go back and add a legend, actually, let's do that. Let's add a legend, plt.legend. 
is a good practice. And now you can see we have our mean values. We'll set this equal to uh, label equals LCL and then label here equals UCL. So we would ideally probably choose to change it to change the color, but ideally it's still the control limit. So maybe we don't even need a label for both, but we'll just, we'll just keep it. So next let's fill between these lines so we can actually have a region that's more visually appealing. So when we do this, we have the fill between the range of the data where the lower limit is now the mean and the upper limit is the UCL. We could update this to actually fill for um, down all the way down to LCL. So this would give us our limit. So now you can see anything in this red would be clear. So let's actually make this maybe green. So anything in the green is good. We can obviously set more ranges. Uh, so if you want to make this more conservative, we can obviously adjust our control limits to maybe one standard deviation and see what's within spec and maybe what's falling out of spec. There's ways we can actually have a rolling mean, which could be very useful to see as things are uh, trending. Maybe there's some spec in the beginning. And then as, as you continue to make more measurements, maybe your instruments out of spec or this, the materials are changing and you want to be sensitive to that as well. But this is a very simple way to build a control chart. There's many other things we can do as such as rolling means and other things that might be more useful. But in any case, I hope this is helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Subscribe to the channel. Bye.